Hi guys, it's Kelly Lanavola here and I'm back with another video for Neat and Tangled. Today we are going to be using um, my favorite nut and obviously you couldn't see it so I didn't put a piece of paper behind it and then the floral heart. I did show you the um, stripes stamp set. I thought I was going to use it. I ended up not using it so please forgive me. But there's a nice little throwback to an older stamp set that if you have I'm reminding you to use because it's fantastic. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to be stamping the floral heart in um, Intense Black Ink by Simon Says Stamp because it's Copic Safe and that's what I'm going to be using today. And I'm stamping this one first because it's going to be my focal point. So I want to make sure that I get that placed properly before I try to fill in the rest of the card. So um, earlier on the blog, one of the girls on the design team had done a, um, a similar kind of layout with the floral heart and I thought it was super pretty and I thought it would be a great way to use that stamp highlighting technique. So here I'm using a very light gray to stamp my heart in the background. Um, I stamped my focal point in black and then the rest of them I'm stamping in a lighter gray. I used Fairy Dust by W plus 9. That was the closest light gray I had on hand. You can use whatever you have. So I wanted to just kind of bolster up that whole idea of it being a focal point and so I decided to do a little bit of inking behind it. So I'm starting with Cracked Pistachio and I'm just going to give it a nice little halo around the entire heart. I did go over the heart. Um, I knew my Copa coloring was going to be strong enough that that wouldn't be a problem. If you're going for pastels, maybe mask the heart first so you don't mess up your colors. Then I switched to Peacock Feathers, I put that just in the center, and then this is Mermaid Lagoon, and I'm really just putting very little of that in the center center. I kind of got progressively more blue um, with my greens <laughs> as I went. Um, I just thought that it would be a little pretty halo to put around the wreath. And then we're going to get into the Copa coloring. So I love little images like this. It's um, large enough to carry a card but there's a it's built up of a lot of little things so you don't have to do a ton of blending um on the flowers i used four colors on the leaves i used three you could even probably get away with two i just you know sometimes you just get in the habit of something and you just stick with it so i would recommend um if you're using to use something that um is going to blend together but still give you some contrast so for the flowers, I mean, I'm really just any um, any place that two points meet is going to be darker. So you're going to add shading where your petals meet. Keep your tips highlighted if that is the way that you're coloring. Make sure to leave them a little bit lighter. And then any edges that um, are on top, try to leave those lighter. Otherwise, you just kind of end up with a darker mess. And especially with these smaller images, That'll be easier to explain when we get to the leaves. It's hard um, talking about the petals that way. So I'm going to move on to the other flowers just so you can kind of see how I colored each one of them. For these, I wanted them to be orange and you'll notice my color combination is two yellows, an orange and a red. <laughs> the reason that is because that yellow, uh, Copics are transparent so they will layer well and that yellow gives me a lot of brightness which I really really love with the orange flowers and then the red gives me a ton of depth. So um, sometimes it can be difficult to get good contrast with the oranges. A lot of the Copic uh, markers, the YRs or oranges, um, are pretty similar in color so sometimes getting some contrast can be difficult. So you can shade with a, um, a brown, you can shade with a red, whatever look it is that you're going for in that specific card. I did the uh, little berries in the same colors and then I just picked two and I did show you with the, the violet that I used the V01 and the V04. I ended up actually going back and doing the V04 and the V09 because I felt like that V01 just kind of got lost with all of the um, blue green in the background. So uh, don't feel like you can't change it up. Just adapt it kind of as you go because I do it all the time. In fact, that's why the stripes left because I was going to use them and then I didn't. <laughs> um, so as far as the leaves go, again, any uh, point where two things meet, that's going to be your darkest. If something's laying on top of one another, you want to make sure that you include that shadow. So here for the rounded leaves, I decided I was going to make those blue green um, just to kind of break up the wreath a little bit and not do them all one color. 
um, but I'm really just shading up from where they're tucked behind those flowers. And then with the BG11, which is my lightest color, I'm coming in from the top so I don't wash out all of my shading. Because Copics are transparent, they will, the lighter colors will remove darker color and I didn't want to lose any of my shading. So here's where we're, we're going to talk back about the objects laying on top of one another because it makes most sense to <laughs> or it's easiest to explain it when we're looking at these leaves. So there's a bunch of leaves behind and then there's one on top. When I say leave your edges lighter, I mean leave your edges lighter for the one on top because you're going to have so much dark shading next to it because those leaves are behind that you want to make sure that those edges are light on the very top one so that it appears to be on top. If I had added dark shading to the edges of the one on top, it's really just going to look very dark overall and not dimensional, which is the look that, well, at least I'm going for. So if that's what you're trying to do, make sure you leave those, those areas lighter. One of my favorite things to do is add detail to things, and so I started adding um, little white dots to the leaves, and um, really, I'm telling you, I added them and they made no sense. I just wanted to make it a little more detailed and a little more um, pretty and feminine, so I added a bunch of white dots, and I think that they're pretty. <laughs> So one of the things that I always do is outline all of my images. Um, this is a EK Success journaling pen. You could use Copic Multiliner, you could use Micron. Um, the reason that I always go Copic Safe is because this right here. So after all was said and done, I didn't feel like it popped enough. So I'm going to go in and add a drop shadow. I always color as if my my light source is in the top right, when I, especially when I'm doing shadows. It's a hangover from high school. That's just when I took an art class. That's what they made us practice with, and I can't shake the habit. So it works for me. Um, but I'm going to start with my darkest color, and I'm going to put that right up against my image. And you'll see even just adding the one darker color really starts to make it pop off the page. But as we blend that out into the background, it... It really does give it the, the look of um, being multi-dimensional and that it's not just flat to your card and that's why I'm such a fan of doing this little trick because it's something that's so easy uh, that will just really add a, a bit of a wow factor to your card. So I started with the C5, I went out to the C3 and then out to the C1 um, just so that everything was kind of blended. Um, the let the well the second to last thing that I'm going to do is stamp the sentiment. This is actually from the My Favorite Nut set in the Floral Heart. It comes with a beautiful little script, I Love You. But this one also fits inside of it, and I think it's super cute for Valentine. I, You can see here, the card background looks a little different. I'm not really sure how I forgot to turn the camera on, but I used Hickory Smoke Distress Ink to kind of make my edges a bit darker and make the the focal point pop a little bit more. And then I did put Clear Wink of Stella on the florals. So that's the entire card. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that maybe you guys will give this a try and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.